Uh, my name is Victor Vines um, with Vines Architecture. Uh, we're going to go through a presentation here today that is not so much a presentation, but more of a work session, more of a dialogue about uh, the new library and the design of the library. Uh, as Tammy mentioned, um, I'll go through the front end of the presentation to kind of give you a sense of what we hope to accomplish today. Um, most of you know that, uh, that the planning of the library uh, is underway. Um, the, uh, the, the point of today is to really go through some introductions of uh, the design team and uh, the planning team with the library. We're also going to give you a little bit of background on the project. Um, as you know, there was a uh, 2009 program that was done, and we'll bring you up to speed on what's happened with that and where we are with it uh, today and an overview of the Durham County Library, uh, the current status of where we are, uh, and we'll have an exercise when it comes to getting your input with, we'll use these boards that you see up here uh, as hopefully a fun exercise to stimulate some dialogue and some input uh, extractions from you guys. And then we'll talk a little bit about the next steps uh, regarding uh, where we are with the project. The objectives today is really to share the current status and background of the project as we know it. Uh, we're also going to be really most importantly wanting to hear your thoughts and ideas about the planning of the library. We are in still the planning stage. It's probably the most critical stage of a project like this. And so getting uh, key input from individuals like yourself is really, really what today is about. And so we're hoping that you won't be bashful about your input and your thoughts. Uh, and the idea of getting that is to not so much focus on details, but the overall visioning and sort of big picture of the project as you see it for Durham uh, and the community here. So um, what we have, uh, we've established a group of leaders. Um, the On the county side, uh, Perry Manns is the senior project manager. He's here today. Uh, Brenda uh, Hayes-Bright is the project manager working with him. You've met Tammy Baggett and you know her uh, as the library director. Uh, Sandra Lovely is the Assistant Director in Planning Facilities, and last but not least, uh, Joel White is the main library manager, and these are the key individuals that the design team has been working with and will continue to work with in planning and designing the library, uh, essentially as a, an executive group. Uh, below that uh, is the design team, which is led by myself and Bob Thomas um, as the design principal and I'm the principal in charge on the project. Uh, Bob and I have worked together a very, very long time, longer than we probably look, about 15 years or so, uh, doing some of the more significant projects in the area uh, and statewide. Uh, Jeff Schroeder is the project manager and library planner, uh, working closely with Jolie Thomas as the lead project designer, and they're here on the front row here, looking so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh, the team is expanded uh, through our consultants, um, and I'll just mention those briefly. Uh, Stanford White is our mechanical electrical engineer. Uh, Stuart Engineering brings structural expertise. Uh, uh, Coulter, Jewel Timms, uh, led by Dan Jewell, uh, will be our landscape and civil design uh, local here in Durham. And the Sexton Group will be providing AV security and IT um, systems design for the project. Uh, Harris Cost will be estimating the project for us, and Light Defines Form is a specialty lighting consultant that we have on board as well. The library experience that we're bringing to you through our firm is fairly extensive. Um, we have done projects uh, here in Durham, uh, and that uh, is primarily Jeff and I working on the um, South Branch Library and also uh, the North Branch. Uh, we've done work in DC, um, uh, three libraries primarily uh, we've worked on there. Uh, the most recent one is the renovation restoration of the Northeast Library, uh, which just actually won a couple AIA awards and uh, historic preservation awards in the, uh, in the capital city there. So we're very proud of that. The experience also expands uh, broadly from very, very small, uh, intimate projects, um, which range from anywhere from a radio station around 1,200 square feet 
to one of the more larger projects being planned for the state of North Carolina right now, which is essentially a 182,000 square foot uh, student center at North Carolina A&T State University, uh, which is uh, just finishing design and beginning construction, hopefully, uh, in the next few months or so. And so that expertise in visitor-based design uh, is what we're very, very passionate about. Uh, we get very excited about a project like this, particularly uh, in a, um, urban settings such as this where the project really, really can be a heroic project uh, and we believe a transformative project uh, for the city and for uh, the county as well. So we're going to bring that expertise to you. Uh, we're going to work extremely hard with you. We're going to continue to have these kind of input sessions to get your input, to get your review, and hopefully end up with a fantastic library uh, here on this site. The project background, as I mentioned, in 2009, uh, there was a programming report completed uh, by the Smith Group, uh, a very sound and steady report. Uh, and so since then, there's been some time that's passed. There's been some changes in leadership. Uh, and so uh, we were asked to review that program uh, and make uh, edits to it for uh, where we are now, which is essentially 2015. And that's part of this process is to get input, get that program updated, up, uh, amend it, uh, and then starting design work on the project. The project organization, um, there are many, many players that play into this, uh, but essentially uh, the core group is us as the design team, uh, the library county, uh, and then uh, obviously uh, the county itself uh, as the project leadership. Uh, and we communicate very closely about the direction of the project uh, and essentially keeping it within schedules and budgets and parameters uh, that are bestowed upon us. Now, what feeds into that are folks like the library staff, uh, their partnership organizations, part of the user group meetings that we're having today are exactly uh, that, speaking with those uh, groups and getting input. Uh, they're obviously uh, the public uh, as the user, uh, county leadership, uh, and the downtown community as well. So all of those folks will be continuing to communicate with uh, and get input for the direction of the project. The project schedule is something everyone's very curious about. Uh, what we know right now is that um, we're in what we're calling the programming verification uh, stage. We're wrapping that up as we begin to finalize these interviews and presentations with groups like yourself. But the hope is, is that we will have that program document uh, updated probably within the next uh, month or so. And then uh, there will be a financing component to the project that will be underway uh, later. And we will be looking at somewhere around summer of 2017 as a closing of this facility and starting construction on it. That will take about a year, and so there will be a target of 2018 fall, more than likely, for the opening or the reopening of the new library here. That's big picture. Uh, those dates may change slightly as we continue the process, but that's what we know at this point. The library overview, um, you know, the visioning, uh, I mean, you know, one of the things I think that we think is very unique about the project is uh, the programs here. I mean, very, very strong uh, uh, community programs uh, that are offered. Uh, people come from all over in order to participate in those programs at this library. So creating a community of lifelong learners um, is uh, a very, very sound foundation uh, for uh, the county main library here. Uh, the mission, uh, as outlined, is to encourage discovery, uh, connect the community, uh, lead in literacy. Uh, and so uh, those will be some of the things that we'll be trying to strengthen uh, with the new facility. The current status of the project, as I mentioned uh, earlier, from 2009 to 2015, uh, we've had uh, new library leadership on board. Uh, there is uh, new library trends that continue to develop. And so what was discussed and talked about in 2009 
quite frankly, may not be applicable today. And so we don't want to make the mistake of being behind on day one uh, with uh, perhaps some outdated uh, information in that document. So we'll be looking at that uh, update. And then we all know that the technology is never ending and uh, can change overnight. And so we'll be looking at updating uh, those requirements as well. And the changes and the growth in Durham itself, uh, there's been quite a bit since, 19, since uh, 2009. And so we'll be looking at how that impacts the site uh, and uh, the surrounding uh, properties uh, to this location. Um, we are working to define what should be in the building and articulate that vision for the library. There's a couple pieces here where we're going to be trying to get you to understand. One is there are certain things, practical things that we need to know that needs to be in the library that we essentially will program. And we think we have most of those. We want to sort of have a gut check from you today on that. But more importantly, it's really about establishing these sort of big ideas or visions that you may have for the library that ultimately will distinguish this library as one of greatness for this uh, county. And so those are sort of the big ideas that we're really trying to see if we can extract from the community and leaders in order to interpret that into the design that we're going to be providing. I'm going to turn it over to Bob Thomas, uh, and Bob's going to walk you through the process that we go through, and hopefully that'll inform you uh, on how we'll be producing the project from now to the end. Bob. Again, I'm Robert Thomas. I'm the Director of Design with Vines Architecture. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the nature of our process and how it may be in a little bit unique relative to um, perhaps other practices. Talk a little bit about the process and then share with you some of our initial, they're really, it's really analysis, um, the observation of some of the, what we've identified as really the issues with the project and most importantly, the opportunities um, with that. As Victor mentioned, um, this is really a critical first step in the process, this program verification and visioning. Um, we, so before we even put pen to paper and start to, start to think about what the building may, be, may look like, um, we're really trying to establish the foundation of the concept for the library. These are going to be the collectively defined ideals that we'll use to really translate and interpret into the architecture. Um, we don't come to projects ever with all of our expertise that we have in public projects and libraries. We try very hard not to begin a project with preconceived ideas. We know an awful lot about this program, but really before we begin any work at all, it's important for us to really understand um, the vision of, of you all and the users more so than kind of what, what we feel about the pro project. So this program verification, we're revisiting that program. We're trying to understand, again, as Victor mentioned, the, the nature of some of the changes at the scale of the room, what would be in the building. Um, there are things, you know, five, eight years ago, we didn't even really know what 3D printers were, you know, so what is the impact of that on the, uh, on the library? Um, the population has grown qu quite a bit. You know, the, the trend is actually rising more so than we even thought um, eight years ago. So again, this program verification is very important to us because our process is very, we like to think it's interpretive. You know, we're not here to impose ideas, we're interpreting and shaping ideas. So what we do here in this first part of the project is really gonna form, inform ultimately um, the principles that will shape the architecture. So we don't come with a, an idea of what it may look like. The image for the library really grows out of these, um, these aspirations that we define together. So with that, as Victor mentioned, hopefully the program is approved, these amendments that we're going to make, and then um, shortly after would, would really move into schematic design. So schematic design, we're looking at iterations. We start to look at a little bit more how the building might lay out. We present multiple options. And again, it's always it's participatory. You know, we'll share our thinking at each step of the way. Design development is Perhaps three months later, we start to, it's a little more specific. We're looking at finishes, materials, and then moving into construction documents. Um, just really rough numbers. This, this process is really about a year. You know, once we begin, once we launch into, uh, into the actual design process, it's about a year. 
Um, there's bidding and negotiation, and then construction, you know, is over over a year. Um, so again, we're at the very beginning, and we haven't really started designing yet. Again, I said it's our process is really we like to think it's idea driven and very inclusive. Um, so here we are at the very beginning. We're in the kind of listening and analyzing phase, and once we get into the into the process, we really do have a very rigorous kind of feedback loop where we're we explore ideas that ultimately we define together. Um, we come back, it's refined. So we'll take multiple concepts, concepts and ultimately kind of develop a, what we like to think of a really synthesized vision for the project that, that really is inclusive of um, really a broad range of constituents. So I think that our practice is a little bit different in that it is um, quite rigorous. Um, and right now, to, to tell you some of the analysis that we're doing right now, we're working really at the scale of the program, the scale of the room um, in the building, but also, um, just as important, we're really thinking about the project at the scale of the city. You know, libraries as a civic institution, you know, really have the power to, um, to impact our, our cities beyond the footprint of the site. So we really want to make sure we understand all of the opportunities inherent in this really, really important public institution, you know, what can it do for Durham? We're, we're thinking about, you know, the library from the inside, um, from, the, from the inside out, and then also from the outside in, really at the scale of the whole kind of county of Durham, and really making sure we're understanding um, all that's happening in Durham, and in particular at this really important kind of recently redeveloping part of Durham. So this back and forth, even at the early phase in the project, is very important. And of course, the Durham, where an update to the master plan is coming, the unified um, development or ordinance, and then Dan Jewell, our landscape architect, who is a really, a really, really um, important advocate for the development of downtown Durham, is on our team, and he's working with us to to uh, to really synthesize some of our um, analysis of the city. So, with all of this, some real some major themes, not concepts yet, but themes have really developed in these discussions of the library. Um, some seem obvious, but they're really important when you think about the, the context. Safe, secure, and welcoming. Um, that's, a, that's a key driver that has some power to shape the architecture. Um, the encouragement of discovery and lifelong learning. You know, we talk a lot with Tammy about the, the library leading in literacy. It's not just literacy in the traditional sense. It's um, technological literacy, it's um, a civic literacy, you know, what can, how can the architecture start to encourage some of that? And we've talked an awful lot about connectivity, connectivity at a lot of scales within the building. Right now we have a building that is somewhat striated, stacked onto three different floors. How can we have better connectivity within the library? And then, as I mentioned before, better connectivity to the fabric of the city. You know, what can we do to the building to reconnect it to the fabric of the city in a, in a very literal way? Can we make it more permeable and transparent and connected and welcoming? And then also in somewhat of a symbolic or a metaphorical way, what can we do to really make sure this expresses a, a strong connection to the community? Some other um, issues that tie into that notion of connectivity to the community, uh, we think there's a wonderful opportunity to rethink some of the outdoor spaces. You know, what can we do to uh, to think about programs that could expand, in essence, the uh, space of the library into the fabric of the city, to really engage the uh, city, put some of the um, wonderful programs that we have here in Durham County really on display. We see that as an opportunity. Um, of course, technologically and advanced and adaptable. What we do know about technology is that we don't know what it'll be in 10 years. You know, so without a doubt, um, by the time this library is built, you know, 3D print, who knows what the next, we, it was demonstrated from 2009 to 2015, a number of changes. So technologically advanced, but most importantly adaptable. You know, Tammy keeps talking to us and we agree wholeheartedly, this really has to be a library that embraces the future. You know, we have to be prepared for, uh, for adaptability. And of course, sustainability. Sustainability is really kind of the, it's the, it's in an ethic of our practice, so independent of whether it's LEED certified or not, we feel passionate about every public project that we work on, and we have our own kind of metric internally. We try to, we shoot for LEED gold just as a matter of course on a project. The county has certain di 
um, certain requirements as well, but sustainability will be a key, key consideration. And then most importantly, I mentioned it earlier, it's a library for Durham. You know, we spend a lot of time um, trying to figure out what makes each library system unique. And that's really what's gonna differentiate the library. So as much as we, as much experience as we have in working in all of these other systems, what we really know is that it's the programs and the people of a place that really define a library. You know, it's not so much, much the building, but it's the people in the place. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize, I'm sure most in this room do, but Durham is home of the, the first public library in the state. You know, so there's a really rich history, the first librarian. Um, so just what can we do with the project, architecturally, conceptually, the programs to, uh, to embrace um, Durham? We talked a little bit about the, um, the model, the, the, the notion of the, the regional model that was introduced um, some years back. And it's important to understand that the main library well on that diagram is thought of as one of the, one of the regional libraries, but it's very unique in that it has a certain civic responsibility. It's an urban library. It has a very different constituency um, and a very different context. I think it's, um, it's somewhat different than the other regionals. But when you think of uh, this really unique seam, and in some ways I think the site is perfect in that it really reflects the, the really diverse um, kind of undertaking of a public library. This Here we are right here, Roxboro in Liberty, with a strong connection, an opportunity to reconnect to downtown and the businesses, the, the neighborhood fabric to the north, what can we do to engage that? And then just as important as all of the new development and new residents that are moving into the, into the downtown area, um, we have to remember this very important component of the, the county and social services, um, some of the county outreach opportunities, um, the urban ministries, and it's a very important kind of component for us to, to address as a key constituency of our, our program. And then also transportation, you know, it's, we have to embrace, I mean, the parking lot is not going anywhere, but we have um, a much access is provided in, um, in many different ways relative to that of the regionals. From the 2009 report, a couple key instances that, um, or elements that I think we concur with that were drivers initially in that project was the notion of connectivity. We talked about this a little bit before. Here's some of the, what the master plan had called parcel one and two across Roxboro. What do we think about the loop and the kind of hindrance to that connectivity? And then most important, image and visibility. This very important corner at, the, the, um, at Liberty and Roxboro. What does that mean architecturally? What are the opportunities there? It is somehow very different than the one on the back and how, how might that inform the architecture? We've heard a lot about this and this was quite obvious um, in visiting the library, we hear a lot of talk about the, the entry, you know, the two front doors. I keep referring to it as like, it's almost the suburban house dilemma that I keep citing. You have a, a symbolic kind of portico on the front, but everyone's kind of entering through the uh, kind of the side door off the deck in the back. So what can we do to really um, better engage the, the fabric of the city and, and define a central location for the entry? So some of the, we call these issues and opportunities at, at the scale of the building, and these start to, to inform how we may start to organize the building. We haven't yet, but it's important to understand some of these influences on the site as we're looking at the program. Again, connectivity, the neighborhood connectivity, what can we do in the, in the site, in the landscape to foster a better connection to the, to the library? Um, a city connectivity, how can we better connect across Roxboro, how making sure we understand um, the site not as it exists now, but a vision for it in the future. Ultimately, Durham will be a much more dense. We'll have more walkers, more pedestrian access from, from the city center. Um, and how can we better connect from the library to the city and vice versa? And then, of course, the, the vital connection to the social services that I mentioned. So again, our landscape architect Dan Jewell will be working very close with us, but we really envision there being a tremendous opportunity to re-envision the site as we know it. We need to, to think about parking and access, but how can we, how can we um, 
arrange the building perhaps to to reconcile that kind of the the dual doors um, and what can we do to make the building perhaps on this edge a little bit more permeable and welcoming so we think a lot at this point about reconnecting reconnecting the building to the fabric of the city that's a big driver for the for the for the project right now it's somewhat insular it's very inward looking and removed there's little natural light and so what can we do to open it not only to introduce natural light but to better connect it to the fabric of the city of Durham so with that that was a, a broader picture of some of the urban conditions that we're looking at that define the program Jeff's going to talk a little bit about quickly some of the trends in library interiors and how these two realms the civic realm and the scale of the room might work together to uh, shape some ideals for the library so in <clears throat> so in thinking about today's libraries one of the things that we feel is important to remember is that uh, collections and services are changing that the book is still a majority of what's in the library but it's supplemented by other things such as electronic media um, DVDs, CDs, and, um, and new collections that are out there. And on top of that is there's, there's a significant number of programs that are happening. Um, it's not just story times anymore. There's dancing, there's, um, there's maker spaces, there's um, study areas, there's community workshops. So understanding this kind of sets the framework for the library going forward. One of the other things that we see is that, that it's balancing kind of vibrant and spatially exciting spaces, that there's, a, there's an openness about it. Um, but then it's also balanced with kind of the need for peaceful spaces. So you have, you have kind of both. You have people that are going to want to come here and have a very active environment, balancing that with people that are going to want to come to the library and have a very quiet and, um, and a place where they can study and, and be by themselves. Along with that, one of the issues that we think is important is uh, the idea of transparency and light. Right now the, build, the building is very heavy. The exterior has, has minimal penetrations in it. So looking for ways to kind of really get light in to make better spaces in from an in, um, for the users inside, but then also from a security standpoint as well. And along with that is the organizational clarity. Um, so when somebody comes to the library, they can easily see where they need to go, where the front door is, um, how to get upstairs, where the collections are. That, that plays a, a key part in a successful use of the library. Um, and then along with that, um, it's also balancing the need for smaller spaces, for areas that people can kind of be confined in, much like the, the people that might want the um, individual spaces to read in. Um, sometimes getting spaces that are outside of the big open um, open areas is important. Technology plays a huge key um, in the in the building itself. Understanding that there's old technologies that might be used in different ways, um, but then also new technologies that are happening, and we don't know what those are. But if you think about since the programming study was done in 2009, the iPad's been invented and is now a major part of people's lives. So um, it's, it's going to be important to plan for the future with technology. And then also understanding how we can be connected um, to inside the library, but then outside the library as well, from social media to video conferencing to group spaces, that we need to plan for all of that. Again, we, we talked about a little bit, but the programs are here. And they're not just typical reading areas. They're active programs that are engaging people. And so new program spaces are needed to accommodate those. Um, but it's important to remember that they need to be flexible as well. That the last thing we want is a space that's used one time a week or two times a week. So how can you program spaces to act for a large group, for a small group, for a, um, a program time when there's not a program going on? Can it be uh, a seating area? Can it be an, a conference area? What can it be? So how do you really get more out of the space that you have? And in the end, it's important to remember that libraries need to serve everyone. Uh, everybody has different uses, uh, different styles, different ways they want to use it. Um, so thinking about those things is how does that inform the library as we go forward? So some of the things that we've, we've begun discussing is the notion of having the adult collection on one floor. Right now the adult is spread between the second and the third. So what can we do to try and get, from a staffing standpoint, get that on one floor? Um, also the entry, as Bob talked about before, uh, there's, there's kind of two front doors, two staffing points, um, so there's some redundancy there as well as it, it adds to the um, sort of the unprogrammed space. And then I think everyone agrees that visibility inside the library is a huge challenge, especially with the central stair. It kind of blocks the, the ability to see 
the whole floor plate. So what can we do to open the, open the space up? And as far as program spaces, uh, we've identified that computers and technology needs to increase in the building from where it is now. Uh, the meeting room size, ideally we're trying to get a space that seats about 300 so that some of the large programs that currently have to go off campus can happen on campus. And then the need for study rooms and conference rooms of multiple sizes. Um, everything from a, like a one or a two person study tutoring room up to maybe a 10 or 12 person conference room that can be used for groups. And then some of the other program spaces that we've just talked about briefly is the idea of a, of a library cafe, um, maker spaces, business incubator, uh, multimedia. But really that's what we want to hear from you is kind of what some of your thoughts are on what needs to be in the library. As far as the collection, we see the number of volumes at this point being in line with where it is now, but um, looking at some of, the, some of the models in terms of what's used, that the percentages may shift a little bit. Uh, the children's has a heavy, heavy usage, so that percentage may, may go up a little bit in terms of how the overall building composition is. And then in terms of spaces, right now, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the adult is, is almost a floor and a half of space. Um, so, it, so the building is heavy in adult. Um, the staff areas obviously are heavy, but that's really not going to change. And the public areas are, are fairly heavy in terms of the double entry. It just takes up a lot of space. So going forward, we see from a percentage standpoint that the amount of pers the, the adult collection um, from a percentage may shift down a little bit to add to the children, um, the North Carolina room, the teen area. And then the biggest jump is really the meeting and program spaces. Right now, there's really this room and a handful of study rooms, but we really see that number changing significantly. And the staff, in terms of the percentage of the building, we see being about where it is now. So in the end, we think the building is, is this plus something else. We don't know exactly what that number is yet, but looking at some of the trends and some of the functions that the library has goals for, as well as where, where the usage is, um, we think that there's gonna need to be some additional square footage in, in the building. Uh, so now what we wanna do is take some time to hear from you. So as you probably saw when you came in, we have a series of boards around the room um, there's three up here, and then there's, I think, five in the back, or six in the back. And so what these are designed to do is really give you a chance to engage and share your thoughts on the library. We have, we have kind of questions that are, that are set to think about the community, think about the building and the uses, uh, as well as other goals. And then in the back, you'll see two boards, and hopefully everybody got, did everybody get a pack of, of dots when they came in? Okay. So we have two boards in the back that are designed to use the dots. And so each, each person gets one color, uh, let's see, one of each color dot on each board. And the intent is that when you look and see some of the programmatic needs, that try and prioritize them in terms of what you feel, which one is the most important to be addressed or the biggest need in the library. And if there's anything that you really feel isn't an issue, we have kind of a, a red dot that is sort of a, I don't want to call it a veto dot, but if there's anything that um, that isn't that you don't feel is an issue, it would be important for us to know that as well. Can we just add this down here? We're putting it here. <laughs> All right. Um, what we want to do now is just take any questions that people might have. I know we've talked a lot as we were doing the boards, um, but if there's anything that people, after doing them or uh, other questions that maybe we didn't get a chance to address. Um, it, could you explain the financing? I know there's a referendum, and yeah. what? How do you plan for so yay or nay if it yeah. passes or Good fails? <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, we here in this room, the county has always anticipated that there would be a bond referendum for the project. We understand that. The issue is that has not been vetted with the county commissioners yet, so we have to sort of take that up. So that's why we generally don't talk about that as much. Um, 
but the fact of the matter is the county has, is committed to the project. Um, and that's why, again, we've secured um, Vines Architecture for the project, knowing that the project will move forward. We do have some other plans in place in case the bond does not pass, but historically, voters typically uh, vote for things like education and cultural improvements. It's the other projects that can't be funded through a bond, so that's why this project has been put on a bond. But that's the short answer. Thank you. If there's a bond referendum and it passes, is the other source, potential source of funding then available for the library to per perhaps do another building or add more space? Because I don't know how these architects are going to do what really should be done here with this space that we have. Well, I guess, and Vine, you guys can help me answer that question, but that's the purpose of this effort that we're doing right now to truly determine what the size of the building should be. Um, I think that's the first thing. You know, right now we have an understanding of where we anticipate things may fall, but we're not certain yet. Is that safe to say? Yeah, and I, I would add to that, part of the, the, the programming verification is not just the spatial aspects of the project, but it's also reviewing the rough order of magnitude budget for the project as we understand it, and we've given the county some updated information on that that we believe more aligns with what the program is actually going to deliver. How expensive is an escalator? <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that question? How expensive is an escalator? $200,000. That's it? Well, and then, and then maintenance? <laughs> the maintenance is the issue. Uh, but they're, they're about that. And uh, I, are you uh, escalator pro? <laughs> yes, for mobility purposes as well as my vision of this main library is an art store. Mm -hmm. I come in, I'm going to buy sheets, but on, on the escalator on the way up, I see the shoe department and there's a sale. So I walk out with both sheets and <laughs> shoes. Uh <-huh. laughs> and that escalator would also open up the building. Sure. It's a good question. Um, We've done a few projects um, that are similar to this, not libraries, but more culture centers. Um, and the debate and discussion of escalators is always um, a lively one. Uh, the, the, the real challenge, quite frankly, is the maintenance of them. Um, they're very temperamental uh, mechanical devices that do great when they run and when they don't. I'm sure you've been on one that is static, and, um, and to get it back going is, is quite a bit. So I think it's one of these things where, you know, the county uh, will need to help us understand uh, from their point of view uh, long term uh, how do you uh, or do you decide to invest in escalators or not. So this question is about literally out of the box of this library space in your programming or strategic planning, did anyone think about removing some of the functions that currently occur here and putting them someplace else in the city, um, like administration or you know, book sale stuff, um, and using this library for more of the public interaction? Um, there have been um, discussions about administration not being in the main library. Quite frankly, I don't like the idea of administration not being in the library because it creates really a disconnect between administration and frontline staff. So it's still being discussed, but it's not something that I'm really in favor of. Um, there's also been discussion about the North Carolina collection. My guess is that it will still remain in the main library, but we are exploring other options at this time. Um, were you, as architects, um, aware of the problems that the Friends of the Library had as far as space goes before this meeting? Because in speaking to several of y'all, it's like, huh? Never heard of you. <laughs> um, so was this initially put into the plan, or is this something you're just hearing about today? 
Yeah, we're we're aware of the Friends of the Library, and I've I've walked through the um, your shed outside. I've walked through the loading dock. Um, I've walked. I've seen the dark room area. So I know you guys are spread out, and that you have a huge book sale. And there's issues in terms of storage, in terms of access, in terms of having no heat, no air. Um, so we know that there's there's significant issues with the Friends that need to be addressed in here, and we've known about that since the beginning of the project. And we realize just in general that the friends, at, really at any library, but here in particular, are a really important component of the library. Um, they really are. I mean, the, beyond just the revenue generation, but symbolically, it's a very important component of the library that we're definitely well aware of. We were here in October, uh, the couple days before the big sale. Uh, we've been here for the sale. And we, so the friends, we've we'll give you a discount. <laughs> <laughs> spending a lot of time talking about, and there will be specific focus groups, and this is something we didn't mention, but with each of the constituents, the friends in particular, the program room, so we'll be back to talk real about really specific kind of design drivers and issues, uh, different retail models, you know, that we're aware of around the country that are used, some are successful, some not so much, so we'll, we'll definitely be back to, uh, to focus specifically You picked a perfect day to um, have this meeting yes. because we are sorting <laughs> after here. We invite, and I'm serious, we invite you, we're gonna be in the garage now for another couple yeah. of hours. Come down and yeah. look at the operation and um, it gives you a much better idea yeah. of it's volume and yeah. how like you I operate. Said, in October when we were here, I think I walked into with Sandra, you were getting ready for the big sale. And <coughs> it's, uh, it's pretty impressive what you managed to do in the space <laughs> that you have. Yes. I mean, it's quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> the location, uh, we, we had that little diagram in there, and we really do feel passionate about the location. You know, it really is uniquely situated um, in that unique seam, you know, between the redevelopment of downtown, and there was a lot of conversation in, the, in 2009 that people felt that it should be, you know, part of the, the city center inside the loop, but that might be a little bit short-sighted in that the library could be the thing that really catalyzes this this really important part of Durham um, to reconnect to the to the fabric of the city. So it's it's a really wonderful location. And then even from a design standpoint, um, it, there's wonderful opportunities. I mean, we're someone mentioned the budget. We have really high aspirations for this building architecturally. That really draw. We, we're a design-driven practice, um, and. I think we all need to make sure we're not limited by what we see here. And I think that's one of our strengths. I think we do work on a lot of what Victor referred to as transformation projects. You know, we don't think of them as renovations. You know, we're not coming in here to put some new carpet in and fix the systems. We really are hoping to re-envision this building from the envelope, you know, how it, how it relates to the city. We're hoping, you know, budget permitting, we can go down to the, um, the skeleton of the structure, you know, kind of re-envision this thing. And I think there is a foundation of what could be a really special building. And that really is always our, our aspiration as architects, um, is to do special work in, in the public realm. And we're very passionate about it. We wouldn't be here if we didn't think we could really, really make this thing special. Um, so that's what, so along with space and size, we're making sure, frankly, you know, we advocate and we have enough money to really, to do this right. You know, we're gonna do this one time, you know, this, this central library in, in downtown Durham and it has to be done right. So there's a lot of work to be done and reconciling the scope and the scale and the quality and the programs, but we're really, as a design team, and I know Tammy as well, has high, high aspirations for the library and she's kind of charged us as the architects to really make sure, you know, the building delivers. Yeah, so. Okay, any other questions or comments? Well, if not, um, we're going to, Jeff is going to go over the next steps uh, so you'll sort of understand what we're going to be doing with the information you gave us. Uh, and. Uh, how we proceed with uh, follow-up.
So, so what we're going to do with the, um, so in terms of the next step for a project, uh, we're going to take the information that you gave us today, we're going to record it, we're going to compile it, and we're, uh, we're going to look at it in, re in relationship with some of the other information we've got from the community sessions, the staff meeting to sort of serve as, as kind of a big picture of everything that we're hearing from the different groups. So once we compile that, we'll share that with you guys, we'll make it available. Um, we're also going to continue the project development. Um, and then also have more of these sessions. We want to we want to keep sharing with you as we continue to progress. Kind of what's happening, as Bob mentioned about our process. We like to kind of come together, share, get your thoughts, and then kind of keep informing. So we kind of have this um, sort of looping looping cycle that moves us forward. Um, but we do really want to make sure that everybody is involved and has a chance to um, to express their thoughts. And then. The last thing we have is that the library has set up some websites for you to follow uh, what's happening with the project. Um, I think the, the uh, presentation from this meeting, the community meeting are on there, as well as some other information and facts on the project. Um, so you can visit those websites or email the, uh, the library if you have any questions. Um, but we'll be around for a little bit. The boards are here. If you guys want to add any last comments that you've thought about as we've been sitting here. Um, and again, if you could, Please return to surveys. In the back, there's a, uh, a sort of a brownish envelope there. If you could put them in, that would be greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thanks.